Hey, good morning to everybody. Happy Tuesday. It's Daryl here. It's bright and early, 7 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. I am incredibly busy these days. Okay, uh, today's video. It's that time of year again. Christmas is this Saturday, and we're going to be all sitting down. And a lot, and I imagine most families uh, have, there's people of different political ideologies, which makes for, uh, a lot of times, makes for a lively uh, holiday, a lively Christmas or Thanksgiving or whatever. Luckily, uh, I think if you add alcohol to that mix, it, it, could, <laughs> it could sometimes almost get dangerous. Uh, luckily, my family has never been, uh, aside from me, uh, has never been a uh, drinker. So there's really no alcohol, thankfully, at uh, my per personally at my Christmas dinner. But okay, before I get into this, before I get into this, I, I want to say too, I'm doing another video. I came across this is going to be the next video. I came across a truck driver from Canada. Okay. And it, I'm not sure what he's trying to do. It's almost like he's trying to scare people. You, you know, I was a truck driver, too. Uh, I was a Teamster out of, out of Manhattan. Teamster truck driver, local 914, I think it was, 917. Anyway, uh, he's saying that he's talking about the Canadian prime minister passing uh, regulations that they're going to have to be vaccinated into going back and forth across the border. And he's not vaccinated. And he's saying, yo, he's going to park the truck and we're, we all better worry about it because we're not going to be able to get all the stuff in our house was delivered by truck, which is true. And uh, he's, it seems like he's trying to put a scare into everybody. You know, he, he, he himself uh, hasn't been vaccinated and has no intention of it. And, and I, I don't know what he's going for, but that's going to be the next video. And it's going to be a good one. Okay. Now, uh, this is what happened. So yesterday's video, I talked about a specific, more or less a specific group of the MAGA crowd. Uh, you know, we all know the guys, the guys with the, the goatees uh, on all, like their Facebook page and on all, the, all their photos are scowling. They got, the, they got the extra 50 pounds that they like to call muscle. Uh, you know, the, the flabby arms, the man boobs, but they, they like to think of themselves as uh, you know, big hulking tough guys when it's, when it's really just... Uh, 50 pounds of fat. But anyway, uh, well, you know, the, the big, big, loud trucks, rolling coal, uh, you know, the Second Amendment fanatics, uh, you know, these guys, those guys. That's who I was talking about yesterday. And I used the word impotency. Wow, I struck a chord. So I get a note today from, this is what I'm talking about, friends and family members. And I got to be very careful because I, I don't want to make the situation worse. But it, it could have been, a, it might be a friend, it might be a family member. But it said something along the lines of, uh, Daryl, you've really, you've really crossed the line this time. Do you realize you called my husband impotent? Uh, and then it went on from there. Wow. Okay. Uh, let's just, let's take, let's take a step back and look at this. Uh, the video I did. Okay. I hope these people realize, too, that, you know, this is a job. It really is a job here. I'm not going out. Most of the time, I like to think that I'm respectful of my friends and, you know, my family members that are from the other side of the aisle. Um, and this is a job. And then the third week of every month, I actually, you know, I get a bank deposit from Google for making these videos. And another thing is, too, is, uh, well, I'll get to that in a second. Um what I want to point out, too, is when I use the word impotency here, and I'm not making excuses, when I use the word impotency, I really meant it like uh, not having power, not feeling, feel, feeling powerless. Truly, that's what I truly meant it like. Um, you know, I, I think the person that wrote me this note knew that, too, but they, it just went out of it. I think, I think something's been eating at this person for a long time. But anyway... Uh, you know, I, I wasn't talking, nobody in my family has the, you know, the stereotypical, that goatee, the, you know, the, uh, uh, let's go buy in shirt, the big truck, you know, that, that's who I was talking about. And, uh, nobody in my family or friends, uh, looks like that. So I was talking about that particular group of people, cause that's how they come across. They come across as, uh as usual, like they, something's been taken away from them. They've been cheated. They haven't been heard. They're taking America back. Uh, you know, Joe Biden's destroying America. The, the thing is too, after I made that video yesterday, you know, I was I'm concerned about the future of this country and the, uh, 
the ratchet me up of this rhetoric uh, heading, you know, with uh, Trump Jr. and everything and people like Trump Jr. and uh, Alex Jones, uh, Roger Stone, all those guys ratcheting up the, uh, the, the harsh. I, I got to watch the wording here. Um, and that's what concerns me. Um, one last thing that I want to mention too now. Two, actually two things to the person that was upset of me using the word impotency. Um, these people, these are the people that support Donald Trump. And I've always said, like I brought it before, you know, how can you support a man that, you know, a, a man whose personality is like this, the, this arrogant narcissist, the person who made fun of that reporter. And uh, they always come back with, I can separate the man, the personal man, from the political person. I can separate those two. That's what they always tell me. That's the excuse every time. You know, I'm not too happy with who he is as a person, you know, and the three wives and the cheating and the, uh, you know, what was it, the porn star there. You know, all the, the list is miles long. But, you know, but their excuse is, you know, I support him because I think he's good for the country and blah, blah, blah he says what's on his mind. And blah, blah. You know, I separate the person from the, the political, the president, the political figure. Well, that's what you need to do with me. Um, you've known me your entire life. You know who, who Daryl is, you know, uh, the, the family person, the friend. This is who, you know, this, this is a job. This is my political uh, commentary job. So if you can separate Donald Trump, the person, from the job, then just do the same with me. The one, the one other thing that I want to mention, too, is these are the same people that, that uh, go around with the shirts to say, F your feelings, you know, but it's always those people that seem to have the most uh, fragile feelings of all it's it's kind of it's not really funny but the same person that wrote me this note I was sitting at Thanksgiving dinner probably about five years ago and they knew that I was the only Democrat in the room the only liberal in the room and they just went out there and way to to torture me with uh Hillary's gonna get schlonged they use the word schlonged and uh, even though being Christians, they still they still said, well, that's it's not a it's not what it's not the word schlong. They 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 kept telling me it's it's not a a, a bad connotation. It's just it's just they say it's just another word for beat. Yeah, these are the same people that had no no consideration for my feelings when I was sitting in that room that uh, that Thanksgiving. So if you're gonna walk around with a shirt, this is have your feelings. Um, you gotta have a little thicker skin. All right, stay tuned for that great video. The truck driver who's uh, concerned about vaccinations and coming, going back and forth, uh, back and forth across the border. That's gonna be one of my next videos. You guys have a great Tuesday. I'll be back later.